call the meeting to order. We start with the Pledge of Allegiance to stand in front of you. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the order of roll call, starting on my right. Councilperson Josh Hearn. Councilperson Brad Meyer. Mayor Jimmy John King. Councilperson Craig Anderson. Councilperson Jeremiah Alton. Looking for approval of tonight's agenda. Nothing to add, though? No. Nope. I'm just going to hit the sheet. Oh, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Looking for approval of the council meeting minutes of the regular scheduled meeting of May 23rd, 2022. So make that motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Questions? Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. We'll be looking for approval of the minutes of the council workshop of May 23rd, 2022. We'll make that motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That also carries. Now we'll also look for the approval of the minutes of the street tour of May 31st, 2022. For approval. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That will carry. Takes us to finance and budget. You have the accounts payable in front of you with the additional listing. If there's any questions, Please direct them to Finance Director Carlo. What was all the street light stuff that we had on there? And that's in the second of the tables. That Prop for ten, there's a 10,000 one for street light stuff. Did we have to replace a couple, or what was that for? For Bull Electric? Uh, no, let me look at it. <coughs> was that for all the LED holes or something? Oh, that could be. Was it, uh, let's see. Let's see it. I looked at both of these out. I should have brought it up. Was it in the street lighting people's cooperative? Utilities, it's on the second payable list, 10,149. That's probably just it's the electric, just a regular bill. That's our regular. That is the electric. Okay, I didn't know if it was. Yes, for all of the different places of Amazon. I didn't know if it was something new or whatever, because I knew he brought up that he was fiddling with a few lights. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion, we have a second. Second, huh? Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? They'll take us to motions in general business. The first item is a public hearing for the Barricade of States final plan. Let me get it brought up here, Bill. Okay, the public hearing will be to consider the final plan for Barricade of States. I'm going to close the regular meeting and open the public hearing. Correct? City Engineer Over Nolte Review Letter is attached, along with correspondence from Elmsley County, recommending line up 11th Avenue, Northwest Intersection. This is scheduled for 2025. As you may recall, the city ran the improvement project utilizing the assessment process, and the public hearing will be held later this fall for that. The development agreement will be signed with Alan Peggy Chiuk prior to releasing the final plat for signatures. The Planning Commission reviewed the plat at the June 27th meeting, and they are recommending approval. So, the hearing is open. Mm -hmm. Bill, do you have anything you want to add to it? Um, we just want to answer questions also. Yeah, I'm available for questions. I just want to say uh, maybe a couple of words. The only difference from the preliminary plan and from the beginning, uh, when we looked at this before with folks, is we have. Uh, same number of lots. We made a little bit of an arrangement here for some lot lines, and we showed a 30-foot easement, a drainage easement here. It's also uh, going to be added as a utility easement, so the utility companies can use that alongside the road. That was the only uh, substantial in the county's review 
what you guys have. Uh, that's the only change from what you already have in your minutes. So otherwise, um, just quickly on the um, schedule. They thought they were going to get all the rock in this week, but they got washed out, and they'll probably get washed out again tomorrow. So he's saying uh, next week they'll finish the rock. Maybe the end of next week or the week after, then we get the curb in, then another one to two weeks to get the black top in. So three to four weeks they'll be done and uh, not ready for business. Everything is done on the on the underground except about the last 150 feet up here by uh, County Road is still uh, yet to be done, but they want to get this tuned up before they finish that last piece. Otherwise, they're they're there. Is that going to, I was curious about this, and I should, as the road goes in, Kodiak, or whatever they call it, is that going to empty, or is that going to open up onto the county road as well at some point, or no? Or is it going to be a dead end for the, now, or? The GDP for the whole area has this road curving over, and a future road that does come out to 11th Avenue. Okay. Yeah. I'm not 11th Avenue. County, county road. Yeah, that's what you think it is, yeah. Yeah, county road. It's not a county road anyway. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> So it'll curve over and meet up with it further down. Right. This will curve over to the west through the, the second. So it'll cross 10th Street and go north to the other one they develop on the north side. Yeah. Over to the left, and then this road comes down and goes out this way. That's what's on the GDP right now. Of course, that could change depending on how the things to the west lay out, but the idea is that this will go through in the future. And my only other question, and I can look at it, but you're right here, so I'll just ask. How many lots is it again? How many double and how many are single? Uh, there's, there's, well, there's 18 lots, so that's nine duplexes. Okay. And then there's 12 single. Okay. Yeah. It's a big project. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, um, it's a, <laughs> I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. It's a planned residential development. So it's, it's not like a, a straight plat. It's a, um, it's, it's the way that you have in your ordinance to do like a performance residential, what used to be called a, a plan urban development, PUD, different things like that. And it's based on, uh, instead of um, like a R1 or R2 where you have uh, setbacks and densities, this is based on pretty much the density. So if you're required to have um, you can't have more than 45% of the, of the project covered by structures, and we're only at like 22%. So there's, there's extra green space and extra rec space over what's required in the ordinance. So it was, we just did it that way to, to get the, the frontages and the, the setup the way it's gonna look from the street. Still a public street, still individual lots, but it's set up as a, uh, an association. Thanks, Bill. Any other questions from the table? This is a public hearing. Any questions from the public? Everything uh, you review is fine, Jenna? Yep, just the comments there from the county and myself, and it's all over the county project. So. Okay. No comments from the public? Any, any written come in? Sure. No. All right. No questions here, so I'm going to close this public hearing. Open the record and it back up. So what we need to do here is the council, the action requested is to approve the resolution 2022 dash a resolution approving Bear Cave Estates final plat subject to the city engineer's review letter. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the plat. A motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a second. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That'll carry. Keep going now. Next item, public hearing again. It's going to be a property cleanup. 306 2nd Street Southeast. Close the regular meeting again. Open the public hearing. After 
failed attempts by the city to mow and clean up the property. It was a May 2nd letter, and a letter was sent out on May 26th, notifying Paramount Investment that due to the non-compliance, a public hearing would be held. Is anyone from Paramount here tonight? So that could be given the opportunity to be heard and present evidence on the matter prior to city ordering the abatement. Pursuant to city code section 610.07 sub 2, the city council will consider the above described nuisance. The public hearing is your opportunity to be heard on this matter and to present any evidence or arguments you believe the city should consider regarding the ordinance violations. So, Paramount's not here. So based on, based on the following finding of facts, the city council hereby orders the abatement of the nuisance and will enter upon the property to remove the offending items. Finding of facts are listed here. An accumulation of refuse and miscellaneous debris on the property along with the overgrowth of scrub trees have been allowed to accumulate and is currently present in plain view of the premises. That accumulation of such refuse and miscellaneous debris along with the overgrowth of scrub trees on the premise of 306 Second Street Southeast is in violation of city ordinance sections 600.05, 610.01, 610 610.04, 610.05, and 675.01. It's in a lot of violations there. Photographs document the accumulation. The accumulation of stuff refuse, miscellaneous debris along with the overgrowth scrub trees is such quantities as to reasonably annoy, injure, or endanger the safety, health, morals, comfort of the public. That accumulation of such refuse and debris along with the overgrowth is in such quantities to be indecent or offensive to the senses and an obstruction to the use of property. So as to interfere with the comfortable enjoyment of life and property of the public. It shall be the responsibility of the property owner to pay all the costs of said abatements, including attorney's fees, administrative costs, which will be assessed to the property to be paid with your property taxes. We have a copy of the letter in front of you, both letters, with pictures. It is offensive. We have made the neighbors put up with this long enough. It's time that something is done. Is anybody actually living there right now? No. Um, property's been looking like this for a number of years, and probably a year ago, um, the occupant left and then parent and hasn't done anything with it. So. And you haven't. It, I see you've sent two letters, but we've got no reason. I mean, there's not even a. No, I we'll get to it. And I made a phone call. Oh yeah, they'll they'll get to it. They'll call you back, and, and nothing from them. So highly prefer. Make sure that I make no. note. Anyone from the public want to speak to this? Anything written? No. I'll close the public hearing. So council action requested is to call for the abatement of all this refuse and miscellaneous debris and clean this property up. So we we'll go in and just remove everything. Sorry, we'll, we'll end up hiring someone to go in, clean it all yes. up. Yep. Continue to, I see we've already mowed it, obviously, just probably today or yesterday. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then just And then up. we'll bill them, and then they won't pay, and then we'll assess it to the property. Just the property. Okay. The only thing we can do is replace that window. Yeah. You know what, it's just but. embarrassing that you even have to go through that. I mean, there's supposedly a reputable company, I would say. I mean, their name's all over the place. Mm -hmm. That's kind of sad. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll probably second that. Do we have a second? Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Who carry? All right, next one is a various request. 201 Lavella Place Northeast. It'll be a fence. Planning Commission held a public hearing on June 7th to consider a variance that would allow for a privacy fence to be placed 4.5 feet from the property to the sidewalk. The applicant is proposing that the side fence be a six foot privacy fence with the rear and east side being chain link. The ordinance requires that fences be placed 15 feet from the property line that a bus a side street in order not to create a visual issue and to continue with the harmony and aesthetics of the residential neighborhood. The property to the north isn't developed yet, but the house would face 2nd Avenue Northeast 
and you can sit as close as six feet to the adjoining property line. To complicate this a little, prior staff mistakenly approved the new home permit and the side yard setback of 20 feet wasn't followed, which would make the setback of 50, which would make the 15 foot setback unreasonable. Staff's recommendation was to line the fence up with the rear corner of the garage, shown with a red dot. The applicant is hoping to get as much use of the backyard as possible. Remove <clears throat> the grading of the backyard and place through the shed. The Planning Commission fell to request a reason. Now you have the drawing in front of you. Are you putting a gate big enough to drive through? Is that why you want it where it is? No, so actually the way you see your yard here, I showed, I took a picture of it. We have such a steep gradient in the backyard that where they mark where we would have to put the, the fence, it would be like through this steep gradient. So we really wouldn't be able to utilize much of our yard at all because the gradient doesn't stop until we meet the shed. <laughs> the only really walkable land would be where we have it fenced in way down here. Um, so in order to at least have some flat area on top of the hill there, we would put it right there. And we've already, we're gonna put this in professionally. We're not gonna do it ourselves. Um, and we've already had all the utilities marked out. We know where everything is and we're gonna stay far clear of everything. So if you go from the corner of your garage, right down right on the top of that hill, yeah. is there any reason you don't you wouldn't use chain link for the entire thing so as to not have any possibility yeah. of blocking any visibility? So the we wanted to do privacy is because we do there's a lot of people that park on that road and just for like peace in the neighborhood, we do have a dog and she will bark at anything that moves. And we've already had neighbors say, Hey, can you make sure your dog doesn't bark? So in order to make our neighbors happy, you know, just so she can't see people walking up and down at all hours. Um, and we just want to be able to use our land without, you know, a ton of people like seeing in. Um, I would say that, yeah, that, that's our reasoning for wanting to do but that. Why did you take that picture? Because I'm sure you <laughs> can't get that out of looking at Google Maps. Oh yeah, no, and we have more just because it is pretty, it's pretty steep back there. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Joshua, good. They have the retaining wall there too, so kind yeah, of where that line would go through it. We have like a huge retaining wall as well, so this is where it would run. It's right through that slope there. We have everything marked out, so we know everything. We know the measurements from the sidewalk. Um, sorry, I can kind of pass them along too. This is the road there. So, um, so going from the back wall. corner of your garage, it just lines up in your house. How many, how many feet back are you from the sidewalk at that point? It's only, it is four and a half. That's how close your house is to the sidewalk. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so just to be able to have a strip where we can walk on flat land, that's where we would put it. And enough to have a gate so we can like walk through and put our mop, push our lawn more like through into the front yard. Um, sorry. Here. Yeah. So this is our gradient there. So this is the gradient there. Yeah, and then we'll include the ones that we took later where we staked everything. So uh, this is the back corner of our house. So the, the fence would go through the retain wall, which you can't punch through the stone like that either. So. Well, can you have these pictures for a second? You can say that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I like them. Remember, Bob, I don't remember if Josh, if some of you were out, we've had this question before in another part of town, which we denied because it was too close. It was exactly the same setup. It was a corner. There's one near my house like that. Yeah. I think it was on A Street. It was a corner lot, and the house next door, it was their side yard on this house. But the next house, it was their front yard, because they backed out. You know, it was a six foot high fence. Yeah. That's, I'm sure that's yeah. part of the reason why you asked why it wasn't chain linked on that. Correct. Side. That's exactly yeah. why. Just yeah. So, I mean, you're opening a, not that we haven't opened cans of worms before, but you're opening quite a can of worm here. Yeah, because I think the one that we denied before was the, uh, technically 801 Third Avenue Southeast with the corner of A Street and Third. Correct. And they wanted to be between the boulevard trees and the sidewalk, and we wouldn't allow it. We said come back behind the boulevard right. tree. Right. A little bit different in the fact that the the different. The only thing I'm seeing different is the gradient. It'd be pretty weird to put a 
have your retaining wall and then put a fence inside the retaining wall. Um, be honest, you got a unique setup for sure. Um, I'm a little hesitant on a six foot, I mean, put a six foot um, privacy fence on top of that retaining wall, it's pretty high for the backyard. We can do five. I mean, we are very flexible. It's more that we just want our dog to not be able to see through. <laughs> so your dog's like the neighborhood pain in the butt? I mean, she's a COVID dog. She loves to bark at everything. She's very like prey driven, loves to chase squirrels and birds. So she'll bark at anything that moves. <laughs> I would just advise against being for the utility easement just because there are two utilities there. Doesn't mean it's not for extension of utilities in the future. You do understand that you are an easement. We did speak about that as well, and the way that we, um, I think it's kind of hard to see from the picture we took, but we were going to stay far clear of that um, transformer as well. We're actually going to... It's not just oh, transformers, it's, it's been all the way to it. Yeah, so gas mains, power mains, everything needs to run within that utility easement, and they need that 10 feet in the future. So that would be an option that they would be able to yeah. Yeah. They'll move it for you if you don't. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, that's, but, that's not I, a I question. If, even if you approve it, they take it. I mean... Correct. Yeah. You need to understand that too. Yeah. We don't need to come back here, hey, they just came in and ripped my fence off. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Or well, any future property owners, if you happen to sell, would need to know that it is their expense that they have to move the fence when land north of you is developed. Yeah. That's completely fair to us. If we need to move it, we will move it. And Josh, you said you guys were okay with it? Yeah, I think it was four to one or five to one. So I tend to I tend to try to agree with your guys as committee most of the time. I do respect what you're saying, but I so I, I generally I would be for this. I I'd probably prefer it to be a little bit shorter, a five foot fence rather than six. But I, I mean I'll be honest, I don't it's not like I'm an engineer and I know the difference in my head right now, but um, I it would have to be I would like it to be very, very, very clear everything that we just said though, the disclosure. That you guys need to know that you're you're rolling the dice if you get approved on it, and and when it happens that they suddenly when it feels like it's not going to be developed for ten years and suddenly it happens in two, and your fence that needs to be torn down, you're going to be really ticked off, mm -hmm. and then you just got to brush your teeth and look at yourselves in the mirror and call it down, I think, and then not bring it on on anybody else. But uh, that's my feeling on it. I don't know. I suppose we should make a motion before we discuss anything. Well, I don't know. I got the. The whole thing about it is, is if it was two side yards, that's one thing, but when you get your face in the front yard and the side yard, on the next, the next house is the front yard. We got ordinance about parking stuff too close to the curb, even next door neighbor for the front yard. These you know, guys, it's their side yard. Yeah. It's their side yard, it's the next person that builds their front yard. Uh, I, I get that too. Um, I do get it. But. I think the one you were talking about, the first one that was, was voted down, I think. The house is already there, so you, you can't move a house. In this, in this case, well, we wanted that one down more so because you couldn't see when you were approaching the, the intersection. Oh, the intersection. It blocked where you couldn't see the intersection. And it was a non-control. It was like a yield sign intersection, okay. so you couldn't see traffic. And I mean, it, it was egregious. This one, at least, is not on it. I don't think the road. It's gonna, this road will be developed further north. It's not going to turn yeah. behind that. So far enough back. So for that matter, that matter I, I don't think it would be an issue. It could be, depending on where the next house is built, but hopefully they can plot it out, they see where it's at before they do it. How far back is is it gonna go? I mean, is it just gonna go to the back of your shed or all the way? Yeah, just to our property line, which really is not line. far off from that shed at all. Like our shed is pretty much on the back corner of our lot. Well, regardless, we gotta make a move one way or the other. I, you guys have heard my comment on it, and I don't care which way it goes, but I I will make a motion to approve it, a five-foot fence, with all the stipulations that we said as far as knowing that it's got to be disclosure, very clear that it's in that utility. Um, I, I think it's probably, if it's approved tonight, it's going to end up be, being reversed, I would, I would think, at some point, but when that is, I don't know. Certainly, that's, if we, if we get a... Without a motion, I think they could open discussion if you guys all need to discuss. Correct, you guys say? I'm just not sure with the easement, the whole easement issue with the utilities. So just so you were aware, the there's a lot of fences that are in the easement, and we just, on the building permit, put yeah. out there that if the fence needs to be removed, 
due to a utility issue that the utility company doesn't pay for it, and it doesn't, they will take it down if the property owner does. So I wouldn't deny it just on that. Okay. For your guys' sake, have you looked at the chain link with the slats to prevent the vision issue that you were talking about so that if it ever in the future came up, you could possibly just pull those slats out or get the cover that goes on the, the fencing just to save you from having yeah. it. Would save us money too. It's just a matter of what would look nicest. I mean, it's a really nice neighborhood and we want it to look nice. Like, we, this is my first home. Like, I really want it to look good. So, I will say this I know where you're coming from. Yeah. Generally, most development areas that I've come across in Rochester have worked on that. They're, they're happier having the covered or uh, chain link than because yeah. people have different privacy fences <laughs> and that's what gets all wonky and ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because most people, the upkeep's crazy and then not everybody matches them and chain link, if it's as far as the neighborhood looking good, as long as everybody agrees and does the same thing, I don't think you guys have any kind of covenants up there to say that it's all going to be the same. What was your motion again, Craig? My motion is to approve it now. Um, with the, our discussion with Jenna, that they need to know that you know, obviously it's easement. I mean, it doesn't matter if they know it or not because the, the utility company will do what they got to do. Um, but we knowing that it has to be disclosed to the next homeowner if you guys do move. And knowing obviously that it, it very well could be a headache, but I, I, I tend to, yeah, I'm tending to want to approve. You think that's five foot too? Oh, five foot. You know, you're, I would like, I would prefer yeah. it to be a little less. So, so are you a five foot variance or a five foot? No, five, five foot in height. Okay. Just seems really high above everything. I mean, I know it does it at first, but the way it grades down, it just okay. Yeah. You got a motion on the table. We have a second. I'll second that. Any other discussion? It's going to be a split one here. So. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. All right. So motion carries. Yep. Motion carries. You can say it if you want, or you don't have to. No, actually, you have to say the whole name. You said the rest of us. You should have put that in. <laughs> you should have put that in. So on Thursday, I can issue the permit, and then you can pass up after that. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. So if you can come in sometime on Thursday. I actually have some election training Thursday morning, so maybe after 10.30. Okay. I do. Always Friday. And we're here till 5, always Friday. Yeah, plenty. It's always Friday. Busy. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. All right. Next one's another variance request. Variance separation between structures, 219 4th Avenue Southeast. Planning Commission held a public hearing on June 7th to consider a five foot variance from the required 10 foot separation for an accessory structure per section 1375.05 development requirements. Thank you. This variance is needed as the applicant wants to add a 10 by 12 shed and adhere to the three foot side and rear yard setbacks. Planning Commission is recommending approval. Man, looking at this on the map, it's like cramming the shed right now. It's going to be tight, but I, I wish I had a shed, so I can understand that. But they're moving it closer to their own structure. Sorry, did you want to? Is that public? Yeah, hearing, hearing. Separation. No, it's in the public hearing. Oh, okay. They already had the hearing. Had the... Consider five foot variance and require ten foot up front. So in, I, I, I'd like that, Josh, you could maybe explain it to me a little bit. Why they got in, what's the difference? Moving closer to from where to what? He's moving he's got a covered deck. Deck. Okay. So he's gonna it's supposed to be ten feet apart he's and the way the property is he can't have a ten. So feet. there'll be five feet from the corner of the deck to the corner of the shed is what yeah. it's showing. Then he doesn't need to corner get the corner of the shed to the corner of the deck. Five feet be the two closest. Five feet, yeah, yeah, I see that here because nowhere else is it that close. And like John, Josh is trying to explain, he's leaving that three foot side and rear property right. Right. for yep. the neighbor. No, I, I get it. Right. That's actually probably uh, more favorable than trying to squeeze it up in the corner of the property. Like you said, your garage is close, actually closer, right? The garage looks like it's really can, close to that alley. I can step from the house to the garage. Jeez. Without jumping. <laughs> I, well, I know you're pretty fleet of foot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that funny, though, when you look at it a lot, and the house is set back so far, and then all the rest of the living happens 
On half a lot. Well, the deck, the shed, the garage. It's not even a full lot. It's a half a lot. So he just cramped in way that did there. Well, I don't, I don't see a problem with that either. Personally, uh, it's his. I'll make a motion to approve it. We have a motion to approve. Any other questions or discussion? I'll second it. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Get the building, Jeff. Next Tire item. project oxidation ditch cover, wastewater treatment plant, approving contract for plant specs. Acceptance of the study of the oxidation ditch cover repair and order plans. At the May 23rd meeting, you were given a report from SEH regarding the oxidation ditch cover at the wastewater treatment plant. It was showing signs of significant deterioration. SEH structural engineer Ben Wolf examined the cover and determined that it is in disrepair. The engineers have discussed with public work staff to discuss possible ways to fix it. Different options were looked into, including removal of the cover and replacement of the catwalk. <clears throat> However, after talking with the manufacturer, it was determined that it is in the best interest of the system that the mixer area of the oxidation dish be covered, ditch cover be removed and replaced. Staff assessed has met since May 23rd, and I recommend entering into a contract with SEH for a reattached contract. Right? You've been approved perusing the contract? Mm-hmm. It's that's absolutely going to have to go through this place, though, because it comes up every day. Well, yep. You need to. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should hold this off to you tour and we get your opinion on it. <laughs> so that's my toilet flush. flush. It's on fire. So, See, you check the whole contract out. I'm going by what you tell me. To approve contract for plans and specs for replacement of the oxidation ditch cover. That is what we have to consider. Do we have a motion? I said a question. Huh? I have a question. Good. Ask Jim. A few years ago, <laughs> when we redid the plan, did we run into problems with, with the SEH engineer or was another engineering firm that we had a fight with? Over at the wastewater treatment plant. Yes, and they've replaced her, replaced him with a different engineer, a very nice young lady, and Jenna also is our city engineer who oversees everything. Yes. So they don't. I just wanted. They don't get away with nothing. Jenna, make sure that that, that person's not involved with okay. the city. Okay. So Jenna's going to make sure there's no issues in the end. I have no problem. I can make a motion. I will be here through every step of it. I can't promise anything, but I will definitely work through whatever we come across. You make the motion to approve the yeah, yeah. We'll make contract the for the plans contract. and specs? Yep. Yeah. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I will also carry. Next is a resolution approving election judges. It's time to approve our election judges for the upcoming primary on August 9th and the general election on November 8th. We have a list of judges in front of us. A bunch of good citizens. The head judges will be Laurel Jacobs and Cheryl Rader. The council actually requested us to approve the resolution 2022 resolution approving election judges for the 2022 elections. I have a question. Yes. Do they use these same judges for the Special, yeah. Election. So typically, for primary the primary election, our voter turnout is very low, like twenty percent maybe. Um, so we only use about four election judges. But because of the school referendum having it on August 9th, 9th versus during the general election, we're going to have to go full staff. Um, I don't know what, how the turnout will be, but hoping that will will be um, a big turnout. Mm -hmm. It is, it's an important Does the school thing. help with the cost of that election then? When they call a special election like that? Um, we could ask them to, but I haven't had any discussions with them. They haven't I just want to ask it. Yeah. But we are, it will cost us more because we have more full staff. Right. I'm just looking at these people wondering how I'm going to handle it if for some reason I fail to get reelected and I don't accept the. Uh, I don't accept the results, and I'm going to be some sort of insurrection here in Spiritville. 
<laughs> well, I'm well, let me tell you, this. our elections are run just perfect. <laughs> so, if you don't get re-elected, it won't be because of Lord Jacobs and Cheryl Bader running the election. The reason Craig's asking that for the um, citizens that are here, the filings for Craig and Josh, for their seats become available July 27th through August 9th. So anyone that wants to run for those seats will be on that general election. Well, the general, the general, 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 general election. election. Yeah, there you go. I have no intention of pulling a Donald Trump. All right. <laughs> Any other questions from the table? I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That will carry. That brings us to the next item. Approval of the tobacco license for 308 South Main. The city has received an application for Honest Liquor at their new location, 308 South Main Street, starting July 12th, 2022. Do you think there's not being open by then? Sure. It's like two months yes, after. It's hoping to be uh, open by then. So that's like two months behind what he was hoping for. Yes. Oh, you're only talking a couple weeks, four weeks away. All right. The city has received that application. Uh, our action is to approve the tobacco license or disapprove, subject to proper application. In, in essence, though, his already approved tobacco license, basically, that one goes away, so it's not approved at that yeah. building. If somebody else were to move in there, no. he basically just starts it over again at yep. the new location, right? Correct. I yeah. move to approve that. Second. We got a motion and a second. Jeremiah, a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Takes us out of the general business. Now we're in the mayor staff consultant reports. The next mayor report from the city of Sturfield is send our sympathies to the family of Shirley Raleigh, Daryl Sinclair, Jim Allen, Bob Bourne, Kim Byman, Charles Gray. Linda Fisher, Harriet Scar, and Julie Andreessen. Now, to mark another special occasion, we're all going to sing happy birthday to Mark Peterson. It's his oh, 65th Lord. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, Mark. Where's the cake? <laughs> we expect treats afterwards. <laughs> Don't forget the military collector show will be held at the American Legion on Saturday, June 18th. And today is Flag Day. It takes on a little more importance today because it's just the holiday mark for our flag. And in a 1917 Flag Day message, President Wilson said, this flag, which we honor and under which we serve, is the emblem of our unity, our power, our thought, and our purpose as a nation. It has no other character than that which we give it from generation to generation. These choices are ours. It floats in majestic silence above the hosts that execute these choices, whether it be in peace or in war. And yet, though silent, it speaks to us. It speaks to us of the past, of the men and the women who went before us, and of the records they wrote upon. Let's celebrate this day of its birth, and from its birth until now, it has witnessed a great history. It has floated high on the symbol of great events, of a great plan of life worked out by a great people. And with that, I would like to also, for those of you who don't know it, thank the Morning's Lions Club. They have a flag program. If you notice when you drive through our streets and boulevards, right now they have 1,614 people participating. That's 614. awesome. 614 people. That's awesome. And we, or flags. I'm sorry, that's correct. There's like four of them are here and stuff. You're correct. We'd like to have that many more. It's a, it's an awesome deal. We don't they, they put it out for Memorial Day, Flag Day, Fourth of July. They go all the way through Veterans Day if they're yeah, able. Veterans Day. And it's like I've been doing it for a couple of years, and it's it's reasonably priced. I can't very reasonably priced. It's pretty cheap. And they come and get them, and they bring them. And it's so cool coming home from work, and now you got a flag in here. And there are certain areas. It's the streets are lined. My street, yep. yeah. Your street is. It's, it's, so with that being said. If Anybody wants to volunteer, there's a few people that put them up. Um, the club is very small, so anybody who just wants to hop in a truck and help set those flags, 
they should call Brian Bushman or they should call Peter Zio. Brian, all right. Or contact Cheryl here at City Hall. All right, thank you. Thank you to everyone who does it. That's all I've got. Bill? Uh, reports in your packet. Just an interesting note. We've already increased population from the census. So the state demographer sent their estimate. Another uh, about 100 people here. So Stewartville keeps growing. Um, then um, uh, Nate's already mentioned it, but the library uh, board and their subcommittee have begun their plans and planning process, which will take a while. But uh, they're going to be meeting again tomorrow to um, really dig in or start in on planning out the uh, library expansion. And then the last thing, I will need the personnel committee, or we will need the personnel committee to meet here in the near future, because uh, pending uh, resignation of a current employee. So we'll have to look at reevaluating those positions and see how we want to move forward and then what options are open for us. And then the uh, union gave us uh, their proposal for you to take a look at, so we'll start um, reviewing those things. All right. That should do it. All right. Thank you, Bill. Any questions for the administrator? So do we end up, is it our responsibility to up, update populate? Like, do all the cities know if the demographic thing came in? Do they all update their population science accordingly? Or? Yeah, the state's already done ours. But, um, well, the state does it. Right now, the state did it based on the 2020 census. So, so every so, 10 years. Every yeah, yeah. It's only Cities months. have the right to do an additional one. Ratch has their own sign company yeah. or sign shop, so they have, they'll do theirs periodically more often. We have the ability to do it if we wish. All right. Thank you, Bill. It'll take us to Finance Director Carly. You got a report? Um, don't have anything in your packet, but um, just starting to think and look towards the 2023 budget. So keep that in mind that we're going to start rolling on that and if there's anything big in projects and things that we need to start looking at and planning for, let me know. Otherwise, that will kind of go in full swing in July uh, moving forward on all of that. All right. Any questions for Carla? Thank you, Carla. Sean, public work. Report is in there. Uh, I just wanted to say the fountains at Lake Florence, the fountain and the pump. I know we've gotten calls on them. We were having issues with them. We were working on them. We may have to replace not the fountain, but the pump that keeps that pond filled up. And I don't know if that fountain's not working because of the elevations of the water in there. Mm -hmm. So if you get calls, I know we've gotten some. One family especially has uh, messaged us a couple times about it, and we are aware of it and working on it, but we may have to get that pump repaired. Other than that, uh, normal, typical stuff, and the reports there. You're getting stuff looking good. You're getting, keeping your head I'm, I'm very happy with the morning crew and having the full-time guy in the morning crew. It seems like the parks are way better shape. Yeah. They're doing a great job of keeping them trimmed and sprayed around and stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions for Sean? All right, tell the guys thanks. Keep it up. They're doing great. That'll take us to... Well, city engineer. Jenna, you got anything for us? Well, we did get the final lift of pavement on, um, so hopefully everybody's liking how that worked and with these rainfalls, hopefully things are um, not puddling anymore since that final lift's there. Um, other thing is we are continuing with the design of the 2023 project. We're at about 50% plans. Um, we would like to schedule and hold the next neighborhood meeting. Um, for the past few projects, we've been meeting before final plans so that we can get input for and make everyone aware of where we are with the design in case through discussion design changes come up with that neighborhood. Um, so right now looking at July 18th, it's a Monday. So unless there is any... Can you be far enough along with that for them? Yes. Yep. We will be far enough along to be able to share, but not too far along where a change yeah. would may, make for a major setback. All right. Do you need council approval for that? Okay. All right. That sounds good. Do you have any other questions for Jenna? Yes, and with that, we were going to send out letters for what was the 2022 CIP project, just with updated 
numbers for them and invite them to come if they have other questions. But when you say numbers, which are you talking estimate, the engineer's estimate on that or what? Yeah, I would re go through the engineer's estimate and see what might be the assessment. Um, so based off of where costs are at that time. But just want to keep people up to date of maybe what to expect for next year. Turn all over the place, Andy. Yep. But I do know that it's highly unlikely by next year they'll be back down to what he reports said from a year, a couple years prior here. So. All right, Jenna. Any other questions for Jenna? All right, thank you. Oh, say, by the way, I, I really like the looks of the way you guys did that over in front of Griffiths. Put that little bit of a cement in there. Yeah. I think that's going to work out really good. I think the whole street in there looks nice, narrow, you know, even though it's narrowed up, put the front and the sidewalks up in there. Was, the last thing we have is the striping, and so we'll get the parking spots actually striped in there. We found out that since we narrowed it, it will be a problem turning oxen teams around inside there. That's why it was so wide. When the mill was there, then the teams of oxen could turn there. How many oxen do we turn around there yeah. these days? I didn't it's have a lot of traffic cops. <laughs> we allow them now? Huh? We allow them now? <laughs> yeah. When they bring flour to town. they got to be service <laughs> oxen or else they're not allowed. Right. <laughs> well, they can want to take transit <laughs> on. <laughs> Thanks, Jenna. Yeah. Library Director Nate's not here. Fire Chief Vance isn't here. Pool Director JP here. I bet the pool was jumping today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the line stretched all the way around the parking lot. Um, Judge, you had a pretty good handle on it. Yeah, it was all the way back to that rear entry by right? the alley. Oh, yeah. They were so full, they had to wait for something to come well, out. Well, I was going to open. Oh, so wow. I had no line to get in. So. <laughs> I hear that new water feature is working out quite nice. Mm -hmm. All right, they'll take us on to Committee Commission Board Reports, Chamber of Commerce. We have nothing in our path tonight. EDA, HRA, our next meeting is not so far. Yep, that's a step for it. Finance? It was last month, the minutes are in there. Okay. Library? Nothing. Park Board? Um, meetings from Mayor in there that we met last night. Um, there's some interest. Uh, we had a presentation from a gentleman who's looking to find sponsorships for the holes in the in the golf disc golf area to update the baskets and the signage oh. and stuff. And um, he also happens to be he's running the the, the oh. tournament at, at, at Summerfest as well. Really? Yep. So seems like he's interested in, in doing some sprucing up of the, the disc golf. Um, uh, course out at Bear Cave, and then there's also um, some interest, among other things, in um, uh, doing some control of the buckthorn in the woods. So we looked at a couple of different options that Sean brought to the table that were might be possibilities. Do you look at the goat option? Yes. The price on goats. That was actually, I think, the preferred option. You've got what you've got to just him. We need proof of insurance. If you're well, man, of course. I'm not sure they are. Good at your drink, yes. I don't know, when you do that, what do you just put up like a snow fence around the area that you want to put them, you mean put them in there? Because I, to to I just recently learned, like within the last year, that this is a real thing that happens. Yeah. And yeah, that's is that how it goes in? So people, you just pick exactly. the area that you want to clear up, and yeah, the they did the entire park. He'd split it into four quadrants, yeah. uh, and he would shuffle them for the entire summer. Just keep rotating between those quadrants. And then in the winter time, they eat all the lower stuff they can eat up and clear the way, and then go in the winter time and cut the bigger trees off. And then in the spring, they get reshoots from the lower portions again, where the goats can reach it. And then he brings it back in the second year. It's a three to five year. He says you need to do it three to five years to get a good. Process out of it. How many so, do you think it would take? 
goats. Yeah. He didn't really tell me. He's, he said as he gets more goats, he gave me a price. And I don't want to say it because it's <laughs> if we got a bid right. against somebody else. But he gave me a price and he said it could get cheaper if he gets more goats and if we do a multi-year contract with him to do it. Is it <clears throat> coming from Cassim? Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. <laughs> I didn't hear it, but I know what he said. <laughs> all right, anything else here, Maya? Uh, that's all I got. Thanks. Just my nah, donation. Oh, yeah. Prior to the you got a foundation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was a donation for from the foundation for this game. The Sturgill Foundation was what, $5,000? $5,000. That's what they donated towards the skate park. Well, that was very and along with that, there is, um, with they're doing donations for the skate park, there is a PayPal account that is set up. There has been stuff out on social media for that, and so that you guys can share it on Facebook and, or on the city website. You can go in and get it as well. Okay, thanks. Good deal. Personnel, we got to get a meeting set up shortly. Yeah, yeah, we'll send some times and dates up for you. Fire and zoning. Uh, we had the three items on our agenda tonight. We're going to turn over the next one. All right. Good. Public safety. <clears throat> Nothing today. Public works. Ready. Report. Roll call. Uh, minutes in your packet. Just addressed a couple of project items, and that was it. We're getting for for EVs in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, that was the bigger part of the meeting. Um, throughout the whole state, set up corridors. <coughs> Obviously, the challenges are where those stations are, if people can make their commutes and then get in line to get charged, and how fast the charges are. So I think right now we, there's one at Quick Trip North, correct? Uh, here in Stewartville, yeah. yeah. All right. The way yeah, that's a big one. Transit Advisory Committee. <laughs> No report. No report. <laughs> <laughs> Sits through an hour on a 90 degree day. This report and no report. That is dedication. <laughs> okay, we got a couple of communications in your packet. A thank you in there. If you take a look at that. And then we have let's see. School district tour info. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm sure they have it out on their website, I imagine, the school is. Yep. All right. That takes us to the open mic. City welcomes and encourages participation from community members. Please keep in mind that your comments we must be pertinent to city business and must adhere to the data privacy rules. No employee's name may be used. Please do not expect action from the council this evening regarding your concerns. We also request that your comments be limited to four minutes. Speakers be recognized only once. So at this time, we'll ask anyone who would like to address the council to please step up to the podium, and if you'd please state your name and address. So anyone who would like to, there you go, sir. Sure. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, City Officials. My name is Peter and I reside at 1117 Peterson Court Northwest. My wife and I purchased our home and moved here 11 months ago from a small city of 11,000 residents in central New York. Just to clarify, its proximity to New York City is similar as Stewart Villas to Chicago, about five hours in the galaxy away. <laughs> I'd like to address the issue of the, a of the looking into a Stewartville police force. I'm sure Ms. Strain has accounted for all of the items I'm going to put forth, but I think they should be before the public. If you consider there is currently a nationwide shortage of qualified law enforcement officers in this in the nation and in the state of Minnesota, recruiting necessary qualified personnel will be critical in order to attract appropriate personnel higher than normal starting salaries and signing bonuses may be an issue. You'll have to poach leos from other police departments. When you project police officer salaries, you must budget 50 to 100% more for overtime. They have court appearances, 
transporting arrestees for arraignment, parade holiday coverage, training, etc. My former neighbor was a city police officer. His base salary was $85,000 with a duty schedule of 140 days. That left 225 days a year to garner overtime, and plenty was collected. Um, also, you'll be outfitting officers with uniforms, including boots and jackets, and full replacements every year. And uh, another neighbor was the purchasing uh, person for uh, the County Sheriff's Department, and they provided three summer uniforms and three winter uniforms every year, uh, plus their equipment. There'll be expenses involved with gun range time every month, ammunition, as well as the cost of accessing the shooting range. Running a police department will also involve at least two to three civilian employees to handle dispatching and all the paperwork involved, as, as well as employee time off. The cost of electronics, computing equipment and services, and communications equipment. Well, you have to construct and maintain a communications tower. When you talk about vehicles, are you including additional maintenance costs associated with high usage vehicles? Are you going to contract with a local business or are you going to hire your own staff for these services? Vehicle replacement, it's a recurring cost every two to three years. Those vehicles arrive as shiny new cars or SUVs, but you have to incur the cost of adding decals and striping, emergency lights, siren, push bars, computers, radar, security cage, D-rings, etc. Where do you intend to house a police department? They require security, controlled access, sophisticated electronics, and much more. In six months, you'll probably be looking to build, equip, and furnish a police department building with a price tag of five to $10 million or more. What about prisoners? Olmstead County will tell you to pay $1,000 a day for housing prisoners. And you'll say, well, we'll house them in our new police department building. We just increase the cost of the new building as well as additional trained personnel to staff the lockup facility. At some point, you may decide you want to have your own city court uh, system to handle traffic violations, minor arrests. Great. You get to hire a judge, clerk, and staff and find a place to house them. What will insurance cost to cover a police force? Given the current climate, a major liability policy will probably come with a significant premium. Not including any buildings or court system, be prepared to have a police department budget of $5 million in five years. And is Stewartville prepared for that? Couple that with a tax increase from the school district's proposed $30 million project, is the tax burden going to force people to move out of Stewartville? If all of these services are included in your contract with the Olmstead County Sheriff's Department, Maybe it's a better bargain than you realize. And if you're unhappy with your contract, please renegotiate with them. There are a lot of sides to this issue, and there's no right or no wrong. I'm just putting forth some additional information to consider. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your input. I thought you started that by saying you were in favor of our own city police department. And then when you went through all that, that's all the stuff that I said at our last meeting. So I, you're not in favor of that, obviously. Because I'm not, I've been a cop in Rochester for 24 years, and I've, I've made it very clear in our workshop a couple weeks ago. And they, they still want to discuss it further, and we will, because we're going to investigate everything. But I basically, you reiterated all the stuff I just said. Okay. It's a I huge. I wasn't here, so I didn't hear Yeah, that. no, correct. And, and nobody was, but I, I agree. Now, as far as your statement about negotiating, if you're not happy with the contract, we wish we could, but the sheriff will not. Okay. He, he, he takes a very non-professional attitude when it comes to negotiations and fails to listen to the wants and needs of our people. And that's why we got to the point where we're at right now. Okay. But I thank you for the research you did on that. You nailed it. A few of the things are a little higher but, uh, than what I think we could do it at. But it is crazy, the thought process. In my personal opinion, being around the cops, and I worked in the fleet area of our department and the training, and I've been in all different areas, and you nailed it, man, trying to... Where are you going to get your graphics? What are we going to do for dispatching? What are we, who are we going to partner with? Are we going to partner with them? Are we going to have our own channel? Are we going to be on their channel? If so, we got to play nice with that. 
what do we do if we do get our own holding area? Tons of policies, tons of rules. Now we got to have access to food. We got to figure out how we're going to feed them. Boom, 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 boom. All I know is that if we ever go that route, I am planning to be chief, and I'm not going to be part of it at all. But uh, yeah, boy, you nailed it, man. That was very professionally done, and uh, you really did figure it out. Thank you. As well as one neighbor being a city police officer, and the other neighbor being on the uh, county's purchasing committee uh, for their uh, sheriff's department. Another neighbor uh, just retired as commander of Troop D of the New York State Police. And so I've been, and, and I have numerous friends over the years that have been uh, Leos, and um, so I, I have uh, an idea of what's going on. And it just, I just want to put forth that there's a lot more to it than just hiring a few people and yeah. getting some cars. I would highly encourage you to pay attention when we have our next uh, workshop if we have them open, uh, because we're gonna, they're gonna work on more research. They've, there's already been a ton done. Carl's done a lot. All the these guys have dug into it. I would argue that if we we're already up and running, we could operate cheaper than what they're charging us in in, in Olmstead County. And what's happening with Olmstead County is that there's advantages. If we had our own police department, we could get our, we could direct this, our cops and say, these local ordinances are, are of importance to us. We need you to do these. We pay a separate fee to have a community cop down here from Olmstead County. Okay, That's part of the contract. They're supposed to be that person, but for some reason they're directed from a higher power not to listen to what the mayor wants done. That's not acceptable. That's ridiculous. Okay. And then, and I know the numbers because I'm on the same records management system as Olmstead County. I do know that uh, it's dangerous nowadays and that we send two cops to calls a lot more than we used to, and rightfully so. But that's part of the county's overall responsibility just in and of itself. If we said no contract and they, they, they threaten us, we're not gonna handle any misdemeanor calls in, that's fine. But statutorily, they have to come down and serve us for gross misdemeanor and felony cases, which could be domestics, any kind of assaults and things like that. So the fact that he tries, he wants to try to keep pushing two more cops every year to the point that he wants Stewartville to fund two cops 24 seven, along with a community officer on top of that. I will tell you the average one written report a day down here. One written report. That means that's it. Even if two cops come down here, they handle it, add notes to the call, the other cops back out protecting the rest of the county. And when they have too much coverage here, they go out and they leave city limits and they decide to police all over the place here, which I know that draws the ire of some of my cohorts up here because we want them in the city limits. So those are some of the problems that we've had with the crazy increase. If we wouldn't have fought it last year and at the last minute we finally got, we finally were able to agree, but it was very, uh, it, it was a very tense situation. And what we were told was that it was gonna to have to be a 40% increase on the citizens of our city for police, for our police public safety portion of our contract or of our budget. That's by far and large the most expensive part of our budget. We couldn't rightfully say we can't we can't go to the citizens and say it's going up 40% in one year. And thank goodness we didn't, because who thought Biden could have ruined everything as fast as he did? But nonetheless, I'm just kidding, that was a joke. So nonetheless, <laughs> I understand there's many reasons for the high prices, don't get me wrong. But uh, when they deny everything, it's frustrating. The bottom line is we agree to do 20% and 20% again, and we're going to really be looking for your guys' input down the road. All we want, we, we do like the service we get. I do. I'm going to speak for myself. I do like the service we get from Homestead County. I do think that they're, um, once we agree next year to bring on the additional guy again, they have what I would consider to be ample staff in town, because for at least 12 hours every day there's in town, and then the other 12 hours there's one, but you always have the roaming squads that are in the county to back it up. So, and, and then of course Rochester always would back too if there's anything real big happening, you know, that that's how that goes. So the main thing is we want good public safety for everybody here in town but we also want it to be affordable for everybody in town. It can't be outrageous, and it's gotta be common sense. So hopefully we'll reach that point that we negotiate again in another, we're good for another year yet after this year, but we'll have to negotiate, but there's gonna be a lot of work to be done, and man, anybody that knows the stuff like you do, I'd love for you to be in that room too. Okay. And any of you guys, if it's a, something that's important to you, please pay attention, because that should be important to you, right? I mean, number one, you need to have 
none of us want cops over our shoulders all the time, I don't think. But when you need them, you want them to be there. And we want them to be the most professional and treat you right and that you're heard. Very important, right? It's, so it's got to be the happy medium so also. I'm glad that people are taking it serious. I don't know if you guys are all here for that issue or not, but... I'm supposed to tell you your four minutes here. Oh, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll agree that aside from the military and homeland security, law enforcement agencies can suck up money faster than any other governmental agency. I agree. And, and that's why you have to be careful if you're going to set up a police force, you need to have all of your ducks in a row. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you 110%. He knows in Rochester, so he knows. Well, you're, you're right, and I, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I see money that's wasted at times. I mean, even us working in the department question whether or not do we need to hire extra for that? Can't we shuffle things around and get it done? Let's try to keep it in check, so. We, we came from a county of 60,000 people. They had to get an urban assault vehicle. And that'll show up when uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones have a domestic dispute, and that's where it's gonna be used. In fact, it was so big they can't even house it at the county facility. They house it 11 miles away in a little podunk town of 600 people because it's so big. Did that drop on taxpayers? Because we have similar equipment, but it's all Hand me down from the military, where you didn't have to, didn't end up paying it. I think they they did get some money from Homeland Security for it, but those units run a million dollars. Yeah, that yeah. could be. So you know, you see things like that, and you say, really? So but well, thank welcome, you. welcome to the community. So, thank you, thank you. We really enjoy it here, and uh, we're happy to be here. Good. And uh, thank you for having me here tonight. Glad to hear from you. Way to get involved in less than a year. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> New Zealand. No, I'm going to go ahead. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah. Well, good evening. I know it's getting late. My name is. My address is 11727 10th Street Southwest in Byron. So we farm just south of Byron. Raising four kids. You're pretty brave, Bill. I know. <laughs> We're in Cerville quite a bit, it's either at the pool or uh, in athletic events and such. A lot of my customers farm around Cerville, so I do have a seed and agronomy supply business as well called Percolet. And uh, last fall, Matt Flynn, as you all know, announced his retirement from the uh, county board after a long and distinguished career. Uh, I took some time to think it over and uh, after some other encouragement from some of my neighbors and community leaders have decided to run for the fourth commissioner district of Olmstead County. So that encompasses Stewartville, uh, Chatfield, Gilbert Neota, as well as southern half of the rural region. So uh, just wanted to introduce myself. I'm going to stick around after the meeting for those of you that have questions. Um, You've got some big shoes to fill. Very big. Yeah. Matt is a legend for those of you that are newer to town. Um, Matt's Matt's a legend. So okay. yeah, this is huge. This is a huge election. I mean, I, I, I applaud you for stepping up because a lot of people talk to me, given my public safety background, and I'm like giving it some thought. It, there's a lot going on, man. It's a big one. And, yeah. So I was on the phone for an hour with Matt this morning. Uh, one of my neighbors, he's a RPD investigator. Uh, my best friend from high school. You must live by Jared Pickens. I do. Yeah, I'm just down the road from Jared. Okay. So Jared knows me well. Uh, my best friend from high school, uh, he's a special agent for uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife. He's, he's done Border Patrol. He was in Katrina in 2005. Um, so I understand a little bit about that. I think there's special needs as Olmstead County grows. We're going to have a lot of things to consider, especially what you're talking about tonight. So it's going to require a very good city county partnership. My commitment to all of you is to listen to each and every one of you in the left. And that's elected positions as well as non elected positions. So it's very, very important. That partnership is key, as Jimmy John and I have talked about before. So my commitment to you, all of you, I'll hang around afterwards. Any questions from, from the council? All right. Thank you, Bill. Well, thanks. Thank you. Anyone else like to use the portal? 
Would like to make a motion to adjourn, please? Wait a second. You gotta let me say that. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a motion? Do we have a second, second. to adjourn? We got a second from Jeremiah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye.